Hey, so the, well, the microphone's right here and I'm talking this way, so I'm just going to take this off. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is a little bit different than normal. Normally, I do tutorials that are super practical, but this time, I just want to do one that's fun. So what are we going to do? We're going to build a very simple button where every single time you try to click it, it's going to move away. So when you try to click it, it's just going to go to a different part of the screen. And then you go over there and you try to click it. It's going to go to a different part of the screen. It's just an unclickable button. And I think it's a super fun little, very easy tutorial that we can do so you can annoy your friends or just so you can learn something. But before we do, please go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss more tutorials like these and more serious tutorials along with tons of other content. And let's begin. Fantastic. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've just created a single folder called unclickable. I've opened up my code editor and now I'm inside of the unclickable folder with my Visual Studio code open. Use whatever code editor you're comfortable with. I'm going to use Visual Studio code like I always do. And I'm going to create a couple of files. The first one is going to be an index.html file. The second one is a script.js file. And don't worry, I'm gonna make this bigger right now so that you can see all of this nice and clearly. The third file I'm gonna create is a style.css file. So this is going to be where I'm going to house my HTML. And I'm got, I've got a little snippet here that just auto populates the HTML skeleton for me. And what I'll do is I'll change the title here to say unclickable button. Now underneath this, I want to import both my JavaScript file and my CSS file so that I can use both of them in my document. So I'll start with the CSS file and I've used a link tag and imported my CSS. Under that, I'll put a script tag and the source for that is dot forward slash script dot JS. So I've got both my JavaScript and my CSS linked. I'm ready to create my button. So this is gonna be super simple. I'm just going to create a button tag. And inside of here, I wanna put the text for the button, which will just say, click me. Now I need to give it an ID so that I can reference it in both CSS and JavaScript. And I'll just give it an ID of button. And that is going to be all for my HTML. Let's see what we have so far on our browser. So as you can see, I have a button here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it nice and clearly. If I click the button, nothing happens. That's because in the JavaScript file, I have yet to actually create any functionality for this button. But I don't like the way that this button really looks. So I'm gonna start by styling this button up a bit. Going into my CSS file, I'm going to target my button ID using a hash. And then I'm gonna give it a color of black so that the text color is black, a width of 150 pixels, a height of 50 pixels, a padding of five pixels so that there's some space between the content and the edge of the button. I'm gonna add a background color and I'm just gonna make it aquamarine. Then the position is gonna be absolute. What happens when we make a element position absolute? Well, that means that it's no longer constrained to its relative container. This basically means that we can position the button anywhere inside of the container that we want to by specifying exactly where we want it to be. And we'll get to that in a moment because we're gonna do that programmatically via JavaScript. Speaking of that, I'm gonna head into my JavaScript file so that I can begin writing the code necessary for me to be able to get this functionality going. I just wanna set a couple of things. The first thing I wanna set is a button height const, and I'm gonna set that to 50 because that's the height of the button. And I'm gonna set the button width to 150 because that's the width of the button. Now, how do we wanna go about this? Well, I'll explain that in a moment, but first I just want to add a event listener to the window object. So I'm coming in here and I'm saying window.addEventListener. The event we wanna listen for is DOM content loaded. And we wanna run a function whenever the DOM content has loaded. I'm gonna full screen this for a moment. This just makes sure that the JavaScript does not run until the content inside of the browser has loaded. Since we're loading our JavaScript inside of the head tag, we wanna make sure that that's the case. If we had our JavaScript in the body tag below our button, we wouldn't have to worry about this, but that's just how we're doing it. So let's move forward. So in here, once the DOM content has loaded, what I want to do is just make a reference to the button really quick. So I'll create a variable called button and set it equal to document.getElementById. And the ID we gave it was but. So now I have a reference to that button and I wanna be able to do something whenever we click this button just for now. Obviously it's not gonna be clickable soon, but what do we wanna do right now when we click the button? Well, let's add an event listener to the button of type click. And whenever we click the button, let's just set an alert that says, you clicked me. And now let's go back here and click on the button. You can see the alert pops up. Cool. 
So I know for a fact now that the button is being referenced properly in my JavaScript because we just demoed it, but how are we gonna make this button unclickable? Well, what I wanna do is every single time I mouse over the button, I wanna move the button. Now keep in mind that the button's position is absolute, meaning that we can move it anywhere we want within the container. And if you look inside of the HTML here, the container is the actual body. What would happen if I went inside the style.css file and set the top to 25 pixels? What would happen? Well, as you can see, the button moved down a little bit. Now, if I set it to 125, it moves down even more. Now, if I set the left to 25 pixels, you can see that it moves to the right a little bit. And then if I set it to 125 pixels, it goes to the right even more. So on the right, I'm going to stop zooming in. So hopefully you can still see this. What I wanna do is delete these and set the left and the top to a random value that fits inside of this body whenever I mouse over this button. So let's just start by setting up the mouse over functionality. So to do that, I'll use the button reference that I have at an event listener. The event listener type that we want is mouse over. And all we wanna do for now is just do a log. Let's console.log, you hovered me. So let's go over here, go into the console and make sure that this is getting logged as expected. So as I hover over it, you can see it says, you hovered me. So we actually have that functionality set in, that's good. But what we wanna do is move the button. Well, as I showed you a moment ago, all you have to do to move this button is set the value of the left and the top to a different value. So we wanna set it to a random value, but we don't wanna set the left or the top so big that it goes off of the screen. So what we have to do is set a max constraint. So a max width and a max height for the screen. And we wanna set the top equal to the screen minus the button's scale, because I'll show you in a minute why that is. So below our consts here, the button height and the button width, I wanna set a max width. We'll start with the max width and we can grab the width of the window by saying window.inner width, but we don't wanna set it to the inner width because what we're doing is we're using the button's left parameter. If we were to set it to the width, then there's a chance that part of the button would be outside of the screen because if we set the left all the way to the max value, the left of the button would be on the far right of the screen. And so the vast majority of the button would be outside of the screen. So what we really wanna set it to is window.inner width minus button width. And now that will prevent us from, from having this outside of the screen. The max value is now going to put it at the very edge of the screen instead of outside of the screen. So we need to do the exact same thing for the height. And instead of inner width, it's inner height. And instead of subtracting button width, we want to subtract button height. So now we have these constraints, these maximums. What we want to do when we hover over it is now set the left and the top of the button equal to some random number that fits between zero and the maximum for each the left and the top. So for example, right now, the top and the left is set to zero and zero, or it looks like there's a little bit of a gap. So by default, I'll come in here and I'll set the top to zero pixels and the left to zero pixels. And then let's have a look at the browser. Now you can see it's on the very edge. So what we wanna do is whenever we hover over it, we wanna set the left and the top to some random value between zero and the edge of the screen. So how can we do that? Well, let's start with the left only. We can say button.style. So we're targeting the style for the button and we're gonna set the left property of the style on the button equal to math.floor. Math.floor is gonna round down. So it's gonna take whatever value we give it and round it down because the value we're gonna give it is gonna be a decimal. And what we're gonna give it is math.random, which is gonna choose a random number. If I hover over it, you can see it picks a random number between zero and one, so it's gonna be a decimal but we don't want a decimal, we want a actual integer. So we're gonna multiply this by the max width plus one. And then at the end, we wanna make sure that we add the string px because this value is expecting a CSS value. And in CSS, we wanna say, for example, if, the, if this ends up being 48, we want it to be 48 pixels. So we concatenate px to the end of this. Now I'm gonna save it. And let's see what happens when I hover over this button. I hovered over it and it moved to the right. If I hover over it again, it moves again and again, and it's only moving horizontal. And that's because we're only setting the left. We need to set the top as well. And we can use basically the exact same logic for this. So I'm copying this line right here and I'm pasting it on the next line. Now, instead of left, I wanna set the top. And here, instead of saying max width, I wanna use max height. Now I've saved it. Now what should happen is every single time I try to click this button, it should move to a random place on the screen, constrained to the window itself. Yeah, this is pretty much impossible to click. I'm trying right now. Yeah, 
This is unclickable. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that fun little tutorial. Hopefully you learned something. If not, well, I'm sorry. At least you control your friends. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you all in the next one.